Awesome. Hey, campers. My name is Anshul. I am the founder and CEO of Camp K-12. And welcome to Camp K-12 TV episode, I think this is 46. So welcome, everybody. And if you haven't joined us before, welcome to the new members. This is a weekly show where we feature super coders, young super coders from around the world, and they teach us how to code a project of their choice. So over the past few sessions, we've been taking a global tour, as mentioned. And last few weeks, we were in North America, mostly in the US, a little bit of Canada. And now we have made our way east. And for today's episode, we're going to the Philippines, specifically Manila, Philippines. And we have a young super coder from the Camp Q12 platform named Drake. So Drake, turn on your video and say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hey, uh, my Drake. name is Drake, and I'm 13 years old, and I live in the Philippines. 13 years old, does that make you 7th uh, grade, 6th grade? Uh, I'm grade currently 7th grade, upcoming 8th grade. Gotcha. So just finished 7th, going into 8th. Yes. Yeah? Well, thank you for joining us. What time is it for you over there in Manila? Uh, for me right now, it's 10.32 p.m. 10.32 p.m. Wow. Yes. Uh, this is a, it's a nighttime episode for you. So thanks for doing this late in the night. I can see you're all decked out. You've got your professional mic. I think I can see a professional gamer chair behind him, slightly blurred oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see it. So Drake, tell us a bit about your life. Uh, are you a video gamer? Do you, do you play stuff? Do you record? Um, do you have a YouTube so, channel? Yes, do I do have, have a YouTube channel. And I do really a lot of things at home. So first of all, as like an instrument, I play the violin. And okay. I do speed cubing. Um, that's something I really do a lot. Um, my so for those that don't my, know what speed cubing is, tell us, tell us what it really means. So the speed cubing is basically a Rubik's cube. And it's some cube that you'd have to solve. There are millions of ways to solve it. But I'm using like the fastest way, which is called uh, F2L. So I learned that okay. a couple years back. Uh, from my old teacher, and that's why, I, like, I really appreciate him for that. This is this is a normal Rubik's cube, right? Solving the normal Rubik's cube as fast as you can. That's what speed yes, cubing is. Yes, yes, the three by three. That is the, the original Rubik's cube. Yes. Yeah, the three by three by three. And so, what is your record time as a speed cube? Um, so at home, the highest time I've ever had was nine seconds, but in a tournament, that has been uh sixteen Did seconds. You say the highest? The highest time, or you mean the fastest time? Like the fastest time I've ever okay, had. So I was going to say, if the, if the slowest time you've had was nine seconds, something, we shouldn't be hosting you for coding. We should be hosting you for speed cubing, if that were the case. <laughs> and probably there'd be like a million people lined up to to watch. Uh, so so that's exciting. So you've been as fast as solving a cube in nine seconds. Yes. From a random position? Um. Yes, it's, it's random. There's actually a website that times you, and there's yeah. like a random generated... Uh, solve that you'd have to do. So I did that and I got pretty lucky on the nine seconds. That's amazing. And what about in a competition? What's your uh, It's been 16 seconds. I haven't been to a competition in a really long time. So yeah, okay. 16 seconds. Right. 16 seconds the last time you competed. Yes. And is that is that like a winning time? I feel like um, the, the funny thing is back then, I actually qualified for the next part. Yep. But then we went home because we thought we didn't. But then we realized when we went home that I actually was part of the next of the tournament. So I missed the last oh, part. Man. You mean you qualified and then you just yes, didn't, I did. didn't get to go. Oh, man. I didn't okay, go well, because I, I was looking at other people and they were getting so, super fast times. So yeah, I'm like. And you, thought, you thought you're not going to make it. Well, yeah. I, hope you get to, I hope you get to go again. Are you going to do it again? I hope so. After uh, COVID-19, I'm still not allowed to go out. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's a, yeah. it's a difficult time in, in the Southeast Asia. Um, well, so you are a speed cuber and you yes. play the violin. Yes. Is that what you, said? I, you know, I used to play the violin as a kid, <laughs> not very well, but I, I did a little bit. So it's exciting to hear that you do too. Uh, what else do you do at home? You said you do a lot of things. Yes. So I also do video editing and audio editing for my mom. I find that okay. really enjoyable. And for video editing, I find that like the most fun for me because I can like experiment different effects and things that I normally naturally couldn't do with like a simple editing software. So maybe in the future, I want to also try learning that video editing okay. uh, properly and well instead of just being self-taught. So I'm really looking forward to that. 
self did nothing bad in self taught. I think that someone like you, it sounds like you're very creative. You're what they yes. call a creative productionist. You have a violin, you have, you have so many other things, video editing, photo editing. It seems like you have a professional mic. You do speed <laughs> cubing. Do you, yes. do you also play video games? Yes, I do yes. play video games. Um, I play, I play a lot of my time on the vi- on, on the video games. Um, on, it's on a shooter cool. game called Valorant. Uh, it's pretty popular right now. Um, there's even you an international. This, if you know what Valorant is, uh, say yes so that Drake knows who's out there later on when he watches <laughs> it. He plays Valorant. So, so do you play Valorant competitively, or is it? I play home? Valorant competitively. Uh, I had like a team before we yeah. played like our first tournament like, like a month ago. And we won that. So we're waiting until August, until the next one. So there's like a $200 prize money for that. I'm super excited for that. (laughs) For the next one coming up? Yes. And the last one you won, did you get any money for that? Um, Not really. Just like $20 from that. $20. That's that's cool, man. I think being able to win something with your own effort is quite exciting. So congratulations (laughs) on the last win. Best of luck for the next one. So you play, you play video games. Yes. You play the violin. You do speed cubing. What about coding? Where does coding fit into all of Okay, this? coding is one of my, like, my most favorite hobbies of all time. In coding, it's like you can do basically anything if you have the skills to. So I started coding in like November 2020. So it's been almost like a year and a half wow. uh, since I started. I started with AI machine learning. Uh, when I started, it was like a little bit hard, but then I realized I just have to memorize uh, different sets of code and put them together to make something awesome. Okay. So Any cool from you that, want to tell us about yes, from your I AI. did. Um, basically, I used to stream on Twitch, um, and I don't know how to set up like Twitch bot because I didn't find the time to do that. So what I did instead was I created a chat bot that would basically um, have like my settings in it in that AI. And I found that super duper cool for my streams. So, yeah. You made a chat bot that helps you with, with, with what streaming? It uh, shows you like your, my settings, for example, let's say you want to like copy my, like my sensitivity. Uh, then you can actually control that with that AI bot that I created. And what language did you use to make this AI bot? I use JavaScript. And this was in your camp K 12 class, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I did. That's amazing, I learned how man. to do it in my camp K-12 and then I just implemented it for my streams. On your own. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. Amazing. It, it's awesome. And, you know, for those who few who are wondering how we end up picking the, the students who end up being super coders on camp K-12 TV, it's people who start taking what they learn in class and extending it beyond class to make projects of their own choosing. And we uh, we got to know Drake and he was nominated by his teacher. And so we, we are having him here. And we've heard that he's very creative. And I think you can tell from what he has just described to you that he loves to make. <laughs> and so you like to code, you've been coding, you've been coding AI chatbots. What are you going to be teaching us today? Okay, so today I'm going to teach you a car chase game. Um, I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, but this is the game that I'm going to be showing you. Let me share my screen. Sure. You're going to show us what you're going to teach us. Awesome. Go yes, for it. it's pretty awesome, actually. If I may Let me say so, share my screen. <laughs> yeah. Here. So this is the game. Uh, so what you do here is you use your arrow keys to move along um, this entire city. There's buildings and a nice ground, and as you can see, there's also sky, and I find that really cool. We can also have this car, and basically, what the goal of this game is is to basically collect as much of the gas as you can. And there's also a text here with the car and the helicopter chasing behind it. So I find this really cool. And yeah, I'm going to show you how to do this. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We would love to learn this. There's a helicopter chasing the car. The car navigates around the buildings. And yes. the the goal of the game is to collect gas and you get score for gas, right? Yes, that's right. We would love to learn it. What language are you going to use? I'm going to be using JavaScript and then I'm going to be using HatchXR for the designing part. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, let's dive in, Drake. I think this is a really great introduction. We've gotten to know you a little bit. Thank you for joining us late in your evening from the Philippines. All right. And very excited to see the creativity that we've heard so much about. And I think that is also evident in the other things you do outside of coding and outside of school. 
so let's let's dive into code. And at the end, when we have some spare time, we can take audience questions and we can also ask you some more general questions. So go for it. All right. So let's uh, start. This is basically the template that I'm going to be using uh, this entire project. And what it basically is for now is just a helicopter and the car, which you can move with your arrow keys and a basic ground below it. So uh, let's make this better. Uh, okay. First of all, I'm going to head to environment. By the way, let's tell, let's tell the audience that they can find this template in the YouTube video description. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you can check Go the ahead. description. There's actually the template for this project. So if you want to follow along, then you can do that. Awesome. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is basically add like a sky because right now it just looks plain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select environments and I'm going to select gradient sky. So we have a nice sky right now. It already looks uh, pretty good. So what I'm going to do is actually change this shading effect in the properties, which is on the right of my screen. And I'm going to change this to two color gradient. Uh, so this gives me just two colors to pick from. So what nice. I'm going to do in here in gradient sky is I'm going to change this to something maybe like blue. So this looks a lot better than it, how it, than how it used to be. Hey, Drake, I'm just going to request you to speak a little slower so that everyone can understand and follow along. Keep in mind, they'll be trying to do it. You don't have to go at the pace at which people will be doing it, but just speak a little slower and keep repeating yourself after a few steps so that those who are following along can do it. So uh, let All me right. just start by rephrasing. Guys, this is on HatchXR.com, which is Camp Kitwell's very own AR, VR, 3D coding platform. And there are two versions of HatchXR. One uses JavaScript, the other uses Blocks. For the younger kids, we're using the JavaScript one. So hatchxr.com. The template link is in the YouTube video description. And uh, once you open it, you're going to see what Drake sees. And now he's showing you how to change the design of this game to look like whatever he's trying to, to build. So Drake, just walk us through what you've done so far on the design. All right. So, so far, what I did was I went to my environments. And inside of the environments, I selected the gradient sky. Because obviously, I don't want this to look too plain. So now it looks like this. So what I did also was I had the material and I changed this shading effect to two color gradient and I made it the color that I have it at right now. Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, so next I'm going to change the ground because it's right now it's just a plain uh, ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this texture and I'm going to make it the walker noise. I really like this one a lot. Yeah, this uh, so great. I'm also going to change the color and make this white, which is a little snowy. Yes. Yeah. And can you show people the hotkey to get rid of the grid that's annoying in the middle? All right. So the hotkey for that is you're going to press G and that is going to hide the grid. Awesome. Yes. And so we already uh, have the helicopter and the car provided for yes, these people in the, in, the, in the scene. Can you just explain the left side? I'm noticing there's a player. I'm noticing there's a heli group and a camera wrapper. What are those things? All right. So the first one is the player. It's basically you and what you're going to be doing when you play this game. So what I have it here set is that, as you can see here, this side of the uh, player is what we're basically going to use as um, our entire project. And we're going to put the car here so that we can move along with our player by using the arrow keys. Uh, so okay. what I also set was also a camera here. So this camera is inside a camera wrapper. And so what this does is it makes it easier uh, to get uh, to know what's inside of our code um, and basically the properties. So let me just add on to what you're saying, Drake. In, in any 3D game development system, you have the idea of uh, nesting objects inside of each other. You can define a parent and a child object. So when you, you know, like in on a Windows computer or on even on a Mac, you can drag things inside a folder. So even on Hatch, when you have these entities or layers as they're called, you can drag a layer inside another layer. So what's already done in the template is that the camera is inside the camera wrapper and the convertible car. Can you just double click the convertible car? Just double click, there. click it on the left. Yeah. If you double click it, it'll take the camera there. There you go. See, so that's that's the convertible car, which is already provided for you in the template, and it is inside the player. Which means when the player moves using the arrow keys, the car will also move using the arrow keys. The thing with the camera wrapper, we'll we'll explain to you later why the camera is inside the camera wrapper here. Normally, you know, the camera is inside the player, uh, but in this case, we're doing a follow in animation where the camera follows the player, which meant that the camera had to be outside of the layer so that it could follow that. 
Go yeah. ahead. All right. So now we basically already changed our ground to make it look better and yep. our sky. So now let's add something really cool that I also showed in the beginning. I'm going to show you how to add the buildings. Now, this is something I really like to do, and it basically makes the design of this project a lot better. So to do this, uh, I'm going to click on environments and scroll down until you see this buildings over here. So you just want to click this and it will pop up on the left of your screen. Now, as we can see, it's pretty jam packed right now. Can you zoom out? zoom out so we can see it better. All right. Let me zoom out here. So right now it's uh, pretty packed together. So I'm going to make them more wide. So to do this, I'm going to go to the right of my screen in buildings and I'm going to change the length and width to 100. Now, as you can see, we have our buildings more spread out. Uh, but as you can see, there's like a ground below it. So we already had a ground and we don't need another one. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down in buildings and make this visibility that off. And nice. oops. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, we have our regular ground and some buildings, which makes the layout yeah, of this really, a lot really cool. Can you zoom out even more so right. we can see the whole scene? Yeah. Just zoom this is out the whole a little, scene. Little bit more. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. So we see the whole plot of there. land. Whoa. Now you're outside the sky, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now let's add our gas can, which you can saw you in the beginning. To... Make so the, can you show us how to make the buildings thinner in case we want more space for the car to move and less space for the buildings? So you can actually change the width to like yeah, this yeah. to split, as you can see, which makes our buildings also smaller. Just Let, in case let's you go with this one. This big. gives our car more space to, to move around. Yeah. All right. And how do you add a hilly terrain? I saw that in the final output you were showing a hilly terrain. All right. So to do the hilly terrain, we're going to click back on ground. And as you can see, if you click on the ground, uh, there's a flat, there's a hills, there's canyon, there's spikes and noise. We're going to pick the hills. Now, as you can see, we have some hills here. And I think this is also really cool if you want more of a design-based project. So I also, you can also do this if you'd want to do it, and I'll leave it here also. Okay, it looks great. Let's do it. Let's keep going. Yeah. So now let's add our uh, next object, which is our gas can which is basically what we're going to use to collect uh, later on and for the code also. So I want to click on the 3D models and select the poly. Then I'm going to search up gas and I'll select this gas can over here. Now, as you can see, your gas can is flying right now. So let's just drag it a little bit nearer to the player for now. Uh, you can do this by using these arrow keys or you can set it in the properties. So let me just move this really quickly. You know, take some time to learn how to orient yourself in the 3D scene. That's that's true. And yeah, after some time, you figure it out, and then you use the arrow keys, and you, you can use the click and drag, uh, and then it becomes really easy after that. Okay, so we move it near to the car. So what I'm also going to do is uh, increase the scale, just so that we can see it a little bit more, because this is pretty big. So let's change all of these, the scale of the Y, X, and Z coordinates to 2.5. So it's pretty big right now. Uh, let's also move it a little bit up for now, uh, just so that we can see it. Yeah, I have one more suggestion. These hills are a little too tall. They're kind of blending into your buildings. You want to reduce the height of the ground. All right, so let's reduce the height to around, let's say, 20 yeah. for now. There, there you go. go. So now uh, what we're going to do is add like a text that we're going to use later in the code. So basically, like I've shown you in the first example of this entire project, the complete version, we're going to have a text on the screen. So to do this, I'm going to click on the text over here and select any of these. Uh, you can select the color you want. I'm just going to select the blue one. So you're going to have a text over here, but just in case you're not seeing your text, that happened to me before, you're going to scroll all the way down and you're going to see this material over here. I'm going to change this side change it to double. So now you can see it from any side and it's more visible to the camera. So what I'm going to do also is under this camera wrapper, make sure you can, you press this drop down arrow and drag this text into the camera. So now this should be next to the cursor and inside of the camera. Yep. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to rename this text 
because text 2D might be hard to type. So I'm going to change this, uh, which is going to be a lot easier to do in the code. Uh, so now we basically added uh, all of these objects that we need. So let's head out to the fun part, you, which is going to be the code. Us, can you tell us why the text should be inside the camera? Oh, yeah. So basically the text should be inside of the camera uh, because um, you need to be able to see the text wherever you go. Okay. And aside from that, uh, since it's with the player, it should stay in the same place. So can you actually try this? Go to play, show us what it looks like right now before we've even coded anything. And okay. Uh, um, you, all right. And then show us what it would have looked like if text was not inside the camera. Okay, there's the All right, text. so this is text right now. Uh, I haven't changed the position of the text yep. yet uh, in front of the camera. So this is just how it looks right now. If I'm going to move around, yep. you're going to see the text all over. Uh, but let's do it without well, the text first move being the inside text of the camera. the camera. That way we can actually see it. And then... All right, let me do that. So I'm going to change the position of this to 000 first. And just to be clear, guys, when you and change then the position of something to 000... And it is inside a parent object, it sets it to zero 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 relative to the parent object. So what yes. he's doing when he sets it to zero zero zero, he's he's basically saying, hey, set it to the same position that the camera is in. He's not setting up the origin yes. of the overall world. These are not world coordinates, these are local coordinates. That's what they're called in 3D systems. Local coordinates are the coordinates relative to a parent, and world coordinates are the absolute coordinates which would mean zero, zero, zero would be at the center of that sphere of the sky, right? This is not at the center of the sphere of the sky. This is zero, zero, zero relative to the camera, which means directly on the camera. And then you're adjusting it a little bit, right? So that it's in yes. front of the camera. Yeah. Minus two might be really close. Try it. Try it. All right. So let's see it right now. And as you can see, it's in front of the camera now. Uh, this is basically an idea of what we're going to have yep. at the end of this. Um, so let's actually try dragging it out and see what happens with the coordinates already there. This out. Basically, in the beginning, um, as you can see, the text is just going to be in the same it's place I'm no matter keep where we internet. move. You should keep going, okay? I'm just going to vanish for about 10 seconds. You should All right. So as you can see, it's just floating in the air. So again, let's move it back to the camera. Now we have our text always in the camera. Let's put it up a little bit. And as we can see, if we press play, we have our text right in front of the camera while we move all the time. Uh, so that's about it for the design. Um, maybe we can um, make these a little bit smaller, these gas cans, because I feel like they're a little bit too big. There you go. Just should be fine for now. So what I'm going to do now is head to the code, which I really have a lot of fun doing. Nice. So. Are we done uh, with our design for the game? Oh, yes, we're done with the design, but let me go ahead and change uh, our text quickly and to gas, just so we get a better idea of what we can see, just like this. So now I'm going to go to the code, and I want to start off by explaining uh, what we're going to do first. Also, uh, first of all, we obviously need to create our variables, which we're going to use throughout the entire project. Uh, so those various variables are going to be the ones to randomize the gas's location. And the other one is going to be used to store the amount of gas that we've collected. Uh, so I'm going to do that. We're going to type in a variable or var um, random x, comma, to separate it, and random z. And then I'm just going to put uh, a semicolon. Next, I'm going to do variable. Just, just tell us what x is and what z is. All right, so X is basically, uh, for example, if you've headed into the design, and let's say I've changed the position of my gas. If I change the X coordinate, it would move it basically side to side. If I move my Y coordinate, it will move it down and up. And our Z coordinate would move it uh, to the other side, forward and back. So the reason why we're not dealing with the Y coordinate is because we don't want it going below the map, obviously. So that's why we've chose to use only our X and Z coordinates. All right, next, um, I'm going to be making the variable so that we know how much gas we've collected. So this is basically a storage system for the amount of gas we collect. 
Also, to do this, I'm going to do variable gas collected equals zero and a semicolon. So this is basically uh, all we need to start off. But now let me add the most important part of this entire code. So what I'm going to do is click on the player, scroll all the way down, and you're going to see collisions. There's a detect collisions with. Now you're going to get this uh, code over here. We can just remove this text. We don't really need it. And as we can see here, detect collisions with these items. Now we don't have a box, nor do we have a cylinder. So let's just remove this entire thing and type in gas can. But again, we're going to make it simpler for us. So we're going to go ahead to back to the design, change the name of the gas can and change that to gas. So I'm going to head back to the code and I'm going to type in gas. And now uh, our player is going to detect when our gas touches the player. So now uh, let's go to the next part of the code. Hey, I want to uh, just talk about this piece of code. So line five right. through line seven. Can you tell us what this is? Line five to line seven? What are you really Line doing? five to line seven. Basically what's in line five to seven right now is just a code that basically makes this in our layers, our player detect when it touches or collides with an object. And this object that we've selected is the gas yep. over here. Yep. And so these parentheses over here are put so that we can write more code inside, which is going to be very important for the project. Can I add something here? This, yes. this brackets that you just highlighted, at the end of line five and at the start of line seven, those are defining a code block, which you can also think of as a callback function. A callback function means when an event happens, after that event happens, call this function. So basically what you're doing here is you're registering a callback function. Player.detect collisions with is the function that registers a callback. It registers a callback when a collision happens with gas. And the function that should be invoked when the callback happens is the function defined anonymously, meaning we didn't give a name to this function, is the function defined with those two brackets. In JavaScript, you, you define a code block with those two curly braces. And that's what you're setting up here. So whenever you want yes. to set up an event handler, like a cause and effect, an event handler which handles an event, in this case, the event is collision, you will use this kind of a event handler in hatch. You can register it with this player.detect collisions with. If you wanted to detect a collision between, let's say, the helicopter and gas, you would just say helicopter or heli group in this case, dot detect collisions with. If you wanted to detect between you know, player and something else other than gas, you would just change gas to something else. So the basic logic here is that this is an event handler and you're registering a callback for a collision, but you could have swapped out the object on either side. Yes. So keep going. All right, so now uh, we're going to basically make our random X and random Z uh, have a random position. And we're going to make it uh, 20. So to do this, we're going to type in random X first equals hatch.get random number. And we're going to set this to minus 20 and 20. So basically, for the X coordinate, anywhere in a starting position between 20 meters uh, negative and positive, it will move. So we don't want this to go too high because obviously it might go out of range and we might not be able to see it. So let's just leave it as negative 20 and 20 right now. So we're going to do the same for the random Z. Hatch.get random number, negative 20 and 20. So this By will way, be guys, for the front and back. He's using a built-in function. He's using the built-in function on Hatch. Um, Drake, can you also show us where else people can find this if they haven't memorized what the name of the function is. I'll give right. you a hint. If so you, don't know it's you can click on the player and uh, there should one, be this something. One will, this one will be in the globals. Go to the go globals. To, where's that? Go to, go to the top left, top left on the math side where it says math. No, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. No, no, clo close the, close this door. Right here. Close it. Yeah. On, no, 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 no. On the left, on the left, on the left. Here? Yeah. Below, oh, below math. This. There you go. Yeah. So below, yeah, on math, look there, at the first. There's one. a get random number. Right. So globals refers to the functions that you can call on 
they don't require you to call them on any specific object. These are just built-in utility functions and built-in helper functions. So you can have a bunch of event handlers here. You can have a bunch of timers here. The For those of you who are not as much of an expert on Hatch as Drake is, you're not expected to memorize these functions by name. First of all, there is an autocomplete that starts showing you what functions you can type as you type it. And the second of all, there are all of these helpers on the left. So if you just click math, you'll see all the math functions you can call. All right. All right. Uh, so now uh, what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to be starting to put the code that will add the uh, a value to our gas every time that we touch this gas tank with our car. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, gas collected variable, which I created in the beginning, and make it gas collected equals gas collected plus one. Now, let me explain this further. So what this does, it, it every time that we collect the gas right now, it will basically add one to our uh, storage, basically, which we will make a text in a second to change this gas value to another number. For example, if we collected one gas, it's going to appear as gas one. And if we've collected two, this is going to add another one to this variable and make it gas collected equals two. All right, awesome. uh, let's move on. We're going to be doing the text now. This is where we can actually wait, can you, can you just, wait, 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 wait. I want you to run this. Show us what All the right, game is. All right, let's run it, what we've done. Yeah. So as of the moment, um, as you can see, there's in, there, we are basically just running through these buildings. And the reason why you're not seeing any like change in the gas is because we haven't actually changed this text. Yeah. Uh, Wait, I'm not, even seeing, I'm not even seeing the gas tank move, right? It, you just, your car yeah. just climbed on the gas. Yes. Oh, we're so actually going to be that. doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So that again. Yeah, I want everyone to see that right now. Nothing is happening. Yes. And you might be wondering, hey, why is nothing happening? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good. So yes. this is this is not a bug, guys. This is as expected because... Actually, Drake, I'll explain it to you. Why is nothing... Uh, you, you explain it to everyone. Why is nothing happening? Because we haven't actually set a code to randomize the X and Z coordinates. There you go. So that's one thing we haven't done. And the second thing we haven't done is we haven't updated the actual text on the screen. Yes. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's so do the text things, now. Those are the two things left in your game. Yes. So now what we're going to do is get our the name of our text, which we set as score text. So we're going to do score text dot set text, which means we're going to basically change the text of score text to whatever we set in here. And we're going to do gas colon plus gas collected. So I'll explain what this does. So it sets what we currently have to the gas and the amount of gas that we have currently collected. So in the beginning, we have nothing. But once we... Uh, touch the gas, it's basically going to change this text to one because we have this set to gas collected equals gas collected plus one. So this is the idea of having the text there. Now let's head to the part uh, which is randomizing the locations of the X and Z coordinates. So to do this, let's again go down and let's type these. Gas.setX, random X, and gas.setz, random z. So if you're wondering what these are going to do, uh, it basically sets the gas x position to random in the x coordinates. The random x basically means we're going to go back to this code and in between negative 20 and 20, it's going to be random there. And the same thing goes for the z coordinates. That's it for the code. And let's go check what's happening with our play. As we can see, now the code is finally working. And as we're touching the gas, oh, it's randomizing locations. Oh, yep. where is it now? Over there. All right. There you go. So now we have this code working. If you're, if you're having trouble as I am right now collecting, uh, what you can do is actually go back to the design 
And there's actually a hill uh, in the ground that we can actually lower the height of the hills a little bit more because right now we can't really see our gas tank. And now if I press play, we can actually see the gas. Where is it now? Right, one, Over one here. More request. One more request for you, Drake. Yes. You know, for you, you must be seeing everything really fast, but on Zoom and on our streaming software, we are skipping frames. I can see it because when you actually collide with the gas, I can't see it and I see it a few frames later. So what I suggest is publish, publish your project and send us a link. We will quickly share it on the YouTube live video stream itself so that people can run your game on their laptop, iPad, phone, whatever. Right? Uh, sure, I, I let me just go uh, log in quickly. Oh, um, you can do it anonymously too. Just say, oh, okay. just say, yeah, just say remix, remix and Log in. Okay, remix and honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let me name so this the car call chase it, project. Call it Drake, Drake, call it Drake car chase. This is Drake. Drake car chase. There will be many there. car chase projects. Yeah. Go ahead and pop. Yeah, remix. Boom. So, so there now send, send me this on Zoom. And, and Niharika, can I request right. you to, can I request you to post this on the, on the live YouTube stream. There you wait, let me go paste it. Otherwise there I can do go. it. Yeah. All right. You won't be able to. No worries. I'll do it. So guys, I'm going to send you Drake's project. You guys, so Drake, just leave this open. You guys can QR scan this to your phone while we're waiting. Meanwhile, let me just hop over to uh, this Where was guy. That? Okay. Uh, that's fine. Click the, click the top. At, it says share. No, sorry. It says QR, 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 QR on the right, on the right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. This one, leave that open. I'll be back in 30 seconds after posting this on YouTube. All right. Done. I posted it on on the channel. All right. And so everyone can actually see his finished project. Uh, you guys can now see Drake's finished project. Camp K12 has posted it, and I have also posted it. Yeah. All right. You guys can all click his his project. Okay. So Drake, are we done? Uh, I believe so. We are done. That was uh, we can actually, if you'd want, you can actually, yeah. if you feel like you're lacking some items, you can head to design uh, in 3D models and search up something, uh, anything you'd want, objects, and just put it there and you'll have Amazing. an object. Yes. Amazing. All right. I think uh, it's time for some audience questions. And Harika, have we gotten any audience questions? Or is everyone just speechless? <laughs> Oh, okay, I can, I can see some comments. I can see some comments. And I think that there are no questions at the moment. So guys, you can send questions if you want. But until then, let me just let me just say that, Drake, that was ridiculously amazing. Because not Thank only you. are you an amazing coder, I think you're an amazing teacher. I think you're an amazing teacher. And I'm just going to tell you that we're definitely going to have you back for another episode. And maybe not just not just like a solo episode, we might do like a, uh, something with you and another kid like you who's super good at teaching and super good at, at coding, like a joint event or like a dual, dual event. Uh, I loved having you on Camp K12 TV. And I generally, don't talk, I generally don't talk in extremes, but this, this was perhaps, I, I didn't have to say anything in this episode. I was just, <laughs> I was just listening and, and watching and I was mind blown. So Thank you're you. like, you're like what six months to one year into your Camp K12 coding journey? How many months has it been? Uh in Camp K12. Yeah. It's been a year and about one year. more than like six months. Yes. One year and six months. I have to say that like you're so early in your coding journey, but you are just so good at understanding the logic, and I know that because of how well you're able to teach it. It's one skill to be able to copy paste code. It's another skill to be able to just teach others how to code something. And I think you did a phenomenal job. So just congratulations to you on being such a strong and young coder at, at this young age of, what did you say, you're 12 or 13? 
13, yes. Yeah, and I'm very excited about what you're going to do next. And I'm very excited to see what you do in the CAMP K-12 coding modules moving forward. I mean, you, you haven't even gotten to the AI Python one with the self-driving cars. And I'm very excited for you. So, uh, and we would love to have you back on CAMP K-12 TV. At Thank some you. Point. Congratulations on this. I think we're all done here. Uh, Niharika, any questions that you would like to ask Drake? Oh, there's like a question in the chat. Uh, okay. Our team didn't necessarily have a name. We just created one for that specific tournament. It was called uh, Team Payaman. It's for the Philippines. Don't worry, it's not like a big team. It's just like a random tournament that we found online and we enjoyed participating in. And apparently uh, the project is not found. Oh, really? Okay, it must be because... Let me, let me just check. Let me just check. Oh, you know why? There's some special characters in your project name. Uh, no, let me just, let me see. Let me see what's happening here. Let me see what's, it's a Zoom copy paste issue. Okay, uh, I'll fix that. I know what it is. It should work now. Do you have a duo or someone you play with in Valorant? Um, so yeah, I actually play with my friends a lot. I have a duo. Uh, if you're curious about like a ranks, uh, I was Diamond 3 last stack. Um, like Plat 3, Dio 1, this act. And I do have a duo. He's uh, Plat 1 right now. We play together a lot. Uh, he might be in this live stream right now just watching. Uh, mm -hmm. Or not. I don't know. Uh, but yes, I do play with him in Valorant. Yeah. Nice. Congrats, man. I, I think you. you're making some friends from your fellow uh, online gamers and competitive gamers. And I think you'll make many more. So do you want to tell us about your YouTube channel? I think you're a, you're clearly a <laughs> pro streamer. You can feel free to tell these guys about your YouTube channel and, um, and try to get so, some. I mean, I don't stream on YouTube. I can give you my Twitch sometime because uh, I don't post on there anymore. But if you'd want my YouTube, uh, I can go uh, link it in the chat if that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Link right. it in the chat. I don't, I don't mind. I think um, you're a very special coder and you deserve to use this platform to get more, <laughs> more people to discover you. Um, no, I don't have, I, uh, my Twitch right now is just like private. I don't have anything there as of the moment. I'm still working on making my streams better and my quality. So yeah, that, that's okay. just no, me. You don't have there to share. Go. Don't, don't take pressure from me. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, actually I would, uh, appreciate it if I could. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's me. Did you share it? Yes, oh, you I shared did. it with me. Wait, who did you share it with? Cause I don't see oh, it on in, the chat. In the YouTube. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yes. Weird. I don't see it. In the stream the chat? chat? Oh, you yeah, don't see it? Okay. Let me go send that. You. Why don't I'll you send it you. to me? I'll, I'll send it to everybody. All right. There you go. Okay. Got it. Found it. So this is your channel. Boom. Sent. Have fun, guys. <clears throat> All right, Drake, thanks again for an awesome and very efficient and very impressive teaching session. And we look Thank forward you. to having you back on Camp K12 TV soon. Maybe when you're in your um, self-driving car mod, you will have you back for one of those. All right. Cool. Uh, thank and all, you. The best, all the best for your um, speed cubing competition that happens next, for all the Valorant competitions that happen next, and for your violin recitals and all the cool things that you do congratulations and best of luck for all of those yes bye guys right. bye